So you don't follow guys to me. You don't follow guys who are possible opponents down the line. You spoke to the UFC and champ, and you were able to champ. What you think his goal is? You! You don't spar with him. You teach him how to build you. So that was the first mistake. If anything else is wrong, I don't know, but that was the biggest one. Did he quit? A lot of people said he quit, that he didn't want to fight after that first I thought he quit. I thought he quit, but I'm not going to say quit because when the referee asked him, did he want to continue? He said yes. Yes. That's not quit. But his body language is like... You can say that, but if you ask me, I'm going to say yeah. Although I don't look like it, if I say yeah, I want to go. Yeah. Because if you ask me, I'm blind. And you say you want to continue, I'm going to say yes. I might can't see. But yes, <laughs> you still want to swing. You can't go right. I want to go. Yes, so although I can't see, I may mean, look back. I may try to keep my balance. But when you say you still want to fight, yes, <laughs> that's all I meant. So I can't say quit. I can say body language didn't look the best, but I, don't, I can't say quit because I thought that initially, and I'm one of the best. I know how to quit. If you understand me, I'm one of the best because my life is built around games. So I know when you quit, you quit. Like, 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 like um. Uh, Amir Khan with Crawford, to me, that's quick. <laughs> I like Amir Khan, but to me, that's quick. But when he said yes, when the referee asked him, and I saw that, I had to, take, I had to, I had to change my thoughts. Because, probably if you would say nothing, I would say quick. Because when Melch Taylor didn't say nothing, he gave referee the opportunity to fight. And Melch Taylor said yes, he'd been the first one to beat Chavez. He didn't say yes, he didn't he say nothing. There, yeah. So, that's like, that's almost like quick. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. But when you say yes, Wow, what's up fight fans? This is Kurt DeVille with Counter Punch Boxing News and I have some new news concerning Roy Jones Jr. Roy Jones, uh, he was on a interview with Fight Hype. I know it's about 22 minutes. He, had, he said a lot of uh, informative things about the Joshua incident and the Ruiz uh, rematch. And he said something that I really didn't even think of which makes a lot of sense. First of all, Anthony Joshua, he has sparring partners in his camp that are European heavyweight fighters. Well, that's like the first level, you know, being a domestic champion, you know, the European champions. Of course, you know, my fans in the UK, you guys, the community over there know about, you know, the domestic um, championships over there. And that's just stage one. Right. That's just like that's the next thing you do past the amateurs when you're getting into the professional ranks. Well, Joshua had these guys sparring and Roy said the last thing you want to do is to spar with somebody that will potentially be your opponent on down the line. And he makes he makes a lot of sense with that. You know what I mean? Um, he also put an example, uh, brought up an example of his own, Lou DelVal. Uh, Lou DelVal was a Puerto Rican fighter that sparred with Roy many of the times, and he was actually the first one to knock him down. Now, Roy didn't really even want to, um, didn't think he was ever going to fight him, you know, and then that kind of created some beef. I remember seeing that fight, and Lou DelVal, you know, was the first one. He hit him with a body shot and dropped Roy, you know, um, but that just comes from knowing his movements, you know, his, his habits. You know, it was certain things that he knew that Roy could do and did do, you know, and he was able to capitalize on him. He didn't win the fight because Roy's that great. Like Roy said, I wasn't getting any better. He was getting better sparring me, you know, not knowing he was going to be a potential opponent one day. So he became that opponent. And then, you know, of course, that's what Roy shared, that you shouldn't do that. And it makes a lot of sense. If you spar with guys, you know, because it, it really... If you think about it, Joey DeWaco right now, this guy is, his balls are this big. His balls should be like two watermelons, two cantaloupes, right? And especially the way he's been talking because he's getting a lot of buzz around rumors or, you know, um, events that happen during sparring. And now he's saying he's the best in the world. So you know what could happen if, okay, let's say, Joshua beats Ruiz, okay? He beats Ruiz, and then he goes and, you know, I don't know what will happen with Tyson and Fury, but then, you know, Usyk might be there, and then I'll talk about Usyk here a little later. Um, Joey DeWaco rises up. Let's see, he beats Gassiev, right? And 
because he already thinks he's the best heavyweight in the world from sparring certain fighters, right? Anthony Joshua, you know what I mean? And he didn't say that after fighting or sparring with Klitschko and Ruiz, right? And Wilder, he didn't say that. He said after he fought Anthony Joshua, he became the best. So if you put all that in a pot and you stir in it, this is what you should smell. You should smell the fact that Joey DeWaco will more than likely want to fight for the heavyweight title one day. You know, and if it's Anthony Joshua, hey, he might have Anthony Joshua's number if he knocked him out, right? You see what I'm saying? That's why Roy was saying what he was saying. Like, hey, you don't fight guys that, you know, that can be potential opponents down the line. It's just not smart. It's not smart for strategy. It's just not a smart thing to do overall. You know, and then he gave his take about him quitting or not, you know. And he said, of course, if you guys heard it, he thought he did it first, you know. But if you say yes, that means you don't want to quit. You can't look around, you know, you look at the body language, sure. But then, you know, the, if he wouldn't have said anything, that would have been different. And something that I must add. Let me share something with you guys. I was pissed at Richard Steele for years, years, for the Mild Mildrick Taylor, <laughs> um, Julio Cesar Chavez senior fight, right? Three seconds left. Um, Richard Steele stopped the fight in the 12th round, which made Julio Cesar Chavez the victor, the winner. So his 89-0 and record went to 90 and 0. Okay. And everybody was just disgusted, you know, and for a while when you seen the HBO, you know, telecast and they are, you know, they're pretty, pretty, you know, announcing everyone. And, you know, of course, you get around to the referee if it's Richard Steele, they boo him. And he just got really kind of infamous and he got content with people booing him because he would just smile, you know what I mean? And, I was pissed at I was pissed at him for a long time until I actually met him, you know, and you know, and he's one of the nicest guys you ever want to meet. You know, he looked at my build. He's like, "Are you a heaven?" I'm like, "No, man, I'm too old for that. I'm in another profession." But he was a really cool guy, you know, and he's actually promoting now. So, um, but listening to this and how Roy explained, like, no, Amir Khan. He quit. <laughs> I like Amir Khan and everything, but he quit. You know, because look how he went out. He quit. And then said, I didn't quit. Dude, you said you did not want to continue. That means your ass quit. Bottom line, right? So I'm glad he was, you know, Roy, you know, uh, differentiated that. Showed you the difference. Quitter, non-quitter. And Mildred Taylor... Speaking of that fight, didn't say anything when Richard Steele asked him. Now, that's a key thing. And I'm glad he said that because I didn't even really think of that. All I knew is he had three seconds left. And I was going off the strip. Dude, it's three seconds. He could have stayed up for three seconds if you let the, the fight continue because he was winning on the scorecards. You know what I'm saying? That was similar to Tyson Fury Wilder, except Wilder had knocked down Fury twice instead of that one powerful knockdown he got in the 12th you know what i'm saying so um but no it makes a lot of sense if you don't say anything that's pretty much dude you ain't talking because you don't really want to tell us no but you sure as hell ain't telling us yes so guess what we're gonna stop this fight on you and that's what richard still did you know and in fact i have to i'm gonna go in depth and um talk about good and bad decisions that referees do you know and he's included in that so you guys stay tuned for that but I'm glad Roy had that to say about um, about all these fighters, you know, the, all these fights. The Andy, uh, the, the Joshua Ruiz, um, the Mildred Taylor Chavez Sr., you know, and the Amir Khan Crawford, you know, and it's it's a good it's a good man. I'm gonna actually put the link below, let you guys check it out because Roy has a lot of knowledge, you know what I mean, and uh, he's still witty, you know what I mean. I always had mad respect for Roy. You know, and it's funny, I lived in Pensacola, and so I always hoped to bump into him. He probably wasn't even there at the time, but anyway, um, no, Roy made a lot of sense, and um, and that's absolutely right. You know, I, I just think that, you know, if you have someone that could be your potential uh, opponent one day, you should never spar with him. And one last one that I 
mentioned or it just popped in my head Mike Tyson, Lennox Lewis. Mike Tyson sparred Lennox Lewis years ago when Mike Tyson was just turning pro. Okay? And these guys are, are they might have still been amateurs. Okay? Because I know they were young, hella young. And Mike Tyson, you know, he, he was, you know, friendly bobbing with Lewis and everything. And he was like, and custom model. And this was back when he was alive. So, uh, yeah, because he he hadn't he hadn't won the heavyweight champion of the world ship of the world yet. So, um, then Cus says, "Yeah, what are you doing? You might want to fight. You gotta fight this guy someday." You know, and it makes a lot of sense. So I can understand where Roy's coming from, backed up by Cus. You know what I'm saying? Because Cus knew, no, don't get too comfortable with this guy and spar and all this shit with him because you might have to fight him one day. And that's what happened. And initially, Lennox Lewis beat the dog shit out of Mike Tyson when they did fight. You know, years later, but it still happened. Anyway, you guys tell me what you think about Roy Jones' statements. Of course, please subscribe. And you guys been counterpunching. Peace.